Oggetti socievoli. Oggetti socievoli presenta. A conversation with is hosted by Prisca Arosio. My name is Sigi Brun and I am an artist and I have a little shop with my art in Copenhagen, homemade art. <laughs> and I teach uh, drawing classes for kids. And um, before I was also a Kundalini yoga teacher. So I have um, had a big interest in yoga and Buddhism and these kind of spiritual things. The reason why I invited you today is because, of course, you, you do art, but also I was interested actually to hear a little bit more about your philosophy and how do you approach your philosophy and how this has been also influential during the lockdown, also in relation to the workshop that you do and also teaching arts to kids. I have, I've always been doing art, so that's kind of just been there since I was a kid, you know. That's just natural for me. But then in uh, around 30, I, I lived in a New York and somehow New York was so stressful. So <laughs> I, I don't know how I did. I got into like spiritual stuff and then I thought it was so interesting, you know, uh, like I followed different uh, spiritual leaders, uh, you know, I went to see them in, in different countries. It, it kind of became a hobby to check out spiritual leaders. Uh, and then I found the Kundalini Yoga and I started teaching that. And then through that, I found the uh, Namyoho Renge Kyo uh, Buddhism from Japan, Nishidan, Nishirin Buddhism. And it's so simple. It's just chanting Nam Yoho Renge Kyo, but it's so powerful. And I, so I got really into that because it was like my life was transforming so intensely. And I was teaching yoga at that time also. And and I just draw like it, it it felt like it was like 10 years of, a, of my life where through just chanting and um, the cheating the yoga drawings just got so intense so first I think I didn't think so much about other people but I was more interested in like different life conditions in this Buddhism you say like there's 10 uh, 10 worlds or 10 life conditions you can have Buddha nature in all of them. So I kind of got interested in that of like drawing and, and being and living my life. So, you know, things come up and sometimes you are happy. Sometimes you are sad. Sometimes everything is going well. Sometimes it's going very bad. Do you know what I mean? But drawing through it all and like seeing this, like that there is this beauty in any of the life states. I use chanting a lot. So, you know, I would chant at one point I chanted like a lot, a lot, a lot of the time. And I felt I got to some quite high life states. And then of course the lockdown came and I must admit, I got really scared. <laughs> like first I was like, because I love life. I, and, and, and it was like, it, it looks so dark. And then I had made a drawing of those birds in one of the chanting session you know they, they kind of came to my head and i i, I draw, draw them down and i was like oh, these birds they mean something they have some kind of energy or you know it, they are important to to get out but it was just before the lockdown so i guess it made sense that they came but at that point i hadn't understood them or so i said okay you know to my mother they were both getting scared and so i was like okay you you can help me make this and I feel this was about the home object was like this bird they gave my mother and her husband a lot of fun to make that and then they were not focused on the whole world of being weird. Do you know what I mean? Like it was like a, it was a nice experience that these birds made happiness making and now they are out in the real world and they're making happiness for the viewers. They felt like they were object in the more heavier uh, life condition, <laughs> happiness in the most dark life condition I work with. You talked about these uh, pieces of um, art. Before COVID then you decided to make it into an object. But then if I understood right, you asked your mom and the boyfriend or husband to help you to make it into an art piece. They helped me uh, uh, to make the wood for one of them. The other ones I made here in my okay. house. Once I felt it was fun that it was an object going to 
their house to make them happy. That the, the Buddhism made it for me to then to make other people happy. Did you ever make objects before making this specific piece of art? So because usually you do like drawings as it's more like a 2D, 2D painting. And now because of COVID, you a little bit change also your approach to art. As I said to you that my focus is a kind of putting positivity in each life condition. I felt in these times we had to go a little bit more heavy. It needed a little bit more, of more energy than in a drawing. I think also drawings have a lot of energy and uh, beauty, but it's a little bit more peaceful object, right? Like drawings compared to big bird in wood, like two meters high. And I felt these times needed a little bit more of, of that. Maybe also they needed a little bit more like a physical presence. I felt it was interesting that COVID took me into a little bit more other direction. So it was really a time for me to go very in, more in than I ever been just in inside myself and inside the, and then you create from this inner place and then you actually can make a business out of it after and I do know like that that's something so inside your home or your house is actually worth something after in the community it's uh, it's still shocking to me with the shop you know because it's all made in in this lockdown totally inside and then it's like oh wow people like it and you know uh, yeah, th that have been a very fun experience with home object. Did you continue doing workshop during COVID? I did. For a bit, I did uh, drawing workshops for kids. The first year of the COVID I did, and then it became really locked down. So then I went home and then I made the little book for the kids instead of, so I made the object of a book. A drawing book for kids you know kids didn't really care if, if it's covid or whatever they were just having fun right what is the process or what is the method to give a positive vibe to people with your art and with your philosophy i always believe that you first have to like make yourself positive i have a quite strong practice with yoga like i still wake up at six o'clock and i do my yoga and then i chant maybe two hours or something to be the best of me and and uh, for the world. At least I, I feel I get off myself, my heart get clean and then I uh, I do my art or then I teach or, you know, the, in that way I, I, I try to do it as pure hearted as I can, you know, for my art making, I, I use a quite neutral mindset. Like I, I never think of what I am draw drawing or I never, I just like, sewn out and then I let it come in a way. <laughs> I would say in my own life, my own process with it have been extremely healing. Like I healed so many things through drawing. I've never focused on anything negative in my art. It's never the focus. It's more like, okay, yeah, this is a little bit more of a heavier energy. So we need to bring some more positive energy forward. Yeah, I believe in that. I, I think it's important to stay on a positive like vibration. So you start from yourself to then go yeah. to the other people. And I can see how it has been working because I used to maybe be much more self-centered. And now, it, you know, it's like then I teach the, then I teach the, the Kundalini Yoga. Then I went to India and, and teach the drawing classes for kids in a children home, you know, and then and then I came home and I wanted to uh, open the school like it, it because my heart gets more pure or something. It's natural that it wants to give to others. Of course, you do make art, but at the same time, I think what I think is fascinating about you is the fact that you are also trying to give the tools to other people to make art. You're right. I want to give other people this experience too. Because I think it's quite beautiful what art making and also like what true to your inner source can do for you. I have friends that they can stress so much about something outside of them. And, you know, it's like you can sort it out inside. <laughs> I think it's interesting to being a human and I and I love creativity that it kind of 
facts uh, makes proofs. Don't you feel like that with objects? It's like you probably also have it with your book. Like that's a proof of your life condition and your love to to others and to your friends and to art making. Like it's your heart. And and I think this is so beautiful about making objects. We are showing our essence through art. Yes, you're putting your heart in it and you're trying to make a better world with your own small pieces of yeah. art or your own small gesture, everyday gesture. Yeah, and I think also if we just, you know, I'm not a, I'm not the type that, but I'm not like so broad, but I think just because I'm not like so, you know, I'm an inward person, I have to do it this way and that works for me. I think there is space for all of us exactly as we are. And I think also that's what the, my philosophy says that we all have a mission and, and it's so different for each of us. I think also creativity is really important for kids and for, for everybody really like to express themselves. It's a place where we can really be pure, right? Like there's no judgment or there will after when you put it out. But when you're together with an object in your house, just you and the object, there is not like, well, at least not for me. I don't judge it. I just do it. And, and I, I love this, this freedom in it. How were you using your living space at home and how this has changed during the lockdown experience? Well, I was always using the chair, either the table to draw, and then I was using the floor for my wood uh, objects. How it changed. I mean, the cats were sleeping with the big birds. They loved it so much. And I thought it was kind of weird, but they were sleeping on it. And when the birds left, it changed so much. So I got my apartment painted and uh, I got Japanese uh, wood lamps. So I felt again, they changed my whole house. Like it was dirty before. Now I have all new furnitures. What type of value uh, do you personally give to your object and how this has changed during your lockdown experience? I would actually say a painting. I bought a painting in Fairy. When you have an object you like, it's a um, mindset that you like, or as I say, a life condition that you like that to be in. So when you look at it or you feel it or touch it, you get in that life condition. And I think that's why we like them. Like when I look at this picture I bought in Fair and it keeps me on a vibration that I really like. And I'm like, oh, I like this object can hold me in a, in a life condition that I enjoy and want to be in. You know. What does sociable objects mean to you or what does it make you think the word sociable objects? I think the picture of get it of it is we all took our favorite object in our hands and we stood in a circle like how cute it would be like the whole world like you with an owl me with a big bird like it's kind of a way of sharing your heart right what you like that's the picture I get of it what it means to me social object it means happiness and joy 